Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. It's a Tuesday night for us. Wednesday morning for you guys. You know what that means? Bible study. Not just any Bible study. The Bible study. But identity. Who are you in Christ? Part two. Yeah. This is the last chance for you to watch part one before tonight. At seven o'clock, or you might feel a little lost. Um, so we said, be there or be square. Yeah, part two is at seven o'clock tonight. Oops. You got hiccups? No, because I drink this water. Or something happened. You got hiccups. So at seven o'clock tonight, California time, we're doing identity part two at the church at House of Rest. You're welcome to come if you're local. If you're not, you're still welcome to come, but it's a long drive. <laughs> so it might be easier to watch us on Facebook or YouTube live stream. Amen. You know, so, um, <clears throat> but yeah, hopefully, uh, man, last week, so many people um, had great comments about it. I'm really glad. I'm really glad it, it came out in a way that was understandable and edifying, you know, so... Uh, I can't say anything more. I mean, to me, it's the greatest uh, seminar we do, the greatest study we do. We usually do it once a year. This is the first time ever that I'm taking my time doing it, actually, That's and awesome. and stretching it out over however it needs to be. However long it needs to be, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So today was, uh, you know, another day. We, um, you know, Brother Joe, as you guys know, his mom had passed from COVID <clears throat> last week. Yeah. Yeah, today was her services. So we were with uh, Joe and Raina today. Um, you know, just wanted to be there with, with them. Support, yeah. yeah, be there and support with them. And We went to the funeral. Uh, we went to the, to the service and to the burial as yeah. well. And then we got to... Um, meet a lot of his family. Yeah, we did. We got to meet a lot of their family. Mm -hmm. I was... I was blessed at the same time, though, so blessed to see the beautiful, huge family that that came from this beautiful woman, just to hear. <laughs> um, there was... Who, Joe's mom? Yes. Oh, my God. The lineage. The lineage that came from her was amazing. There was, um, gosh, I believe it was 30-something grandchil grandchildren. And then from there came um, 86 grandchildren. And then, oh my God, I let me get this right. And I think from there came, um, gosh, oh my gosh, you didn't send me the stats, but I know that... Um, was it 30, 30 I something? I don't know, you don't guys, remember. but the numbers were really high. But I know that, sorry, the great, 86 great grandchildren and 19 great great grandchildren. And I don't know, the numbers were just extremely high. And I just know that I was just tremendously blessed to hear how huge the lineage was. And there were six, um, there, were, there were six, uh, what do you call? I don't know. Six, uh, when when it's like, oh my God, see see what happens to my memory right now? With six generations, guys. Oh. Six generations. I thought that was just amazingly beautiful. 97 years old. 97 years old. And what a blessing to have lived such a full life. Yeah. And um, there were just so many beautiful things that were said and... Um, I don't know. Just, just to know that and to hear that, and to see the legacy that she that she left. You know, uh, I was just, I was just blown away, and I was just, I don't know. My heart was just so, I don't know. There was just such a, my heart was just filled. Um, just seeing her picture, my heart was just filled with so much joy and and just blessings. Um, just to see that, I, I just to see the just just a small part of the whole family that was there and it was full you know yeah but um 
You know, it's it goes back to the filters and how we see things because, you know, unfortunately, and and it's always sad when somebody passes. Yeah. Always, always, of always. Course. I mean, I I looked at Joe, and I'm like, he's holding himself, conducting I, himself. I, yeah. If that was me, I'd be messed up. I I, I would just you know I don't even, you know but. You know, and it's a lot of times when somebody young passes, it's a different hurt. Yeah. It's a different hurt, you know. But anyways, my what I was trying to say is this, is that everybody ha has a day. All of us. So that's why you can either choose to use your, use a funeral as a sad moment or use it to celebrate that person's life. Because everyone passes, but not everyone lives the same life. Yeah. You know, and... You know, I find myself, you know, when I get sad about people that have passed, I think of, and all of a sudden, you think of funny things they said or things mm -hmm. you've done or their laugh or, you know, things like that, you know. And the joyful moments and the memories. Yeah, because that's what, that's what stays. Yeah. You know, the memories and, and those times, you know, so. But, I, I, you know, we got to spend um, lunch with them after and spend some time and, and you know, and, and then we went to go. We had we had lunch at um at a restaurant, and then we got to meet a, a beautiful woman by the name of Amparo. And um, I don't know, there's just something about her. A waitress. Yeah, she was in her seventies. She was seventy six years old. And um, and there was just something. Reina was laughing about me because she was like, you know, how do you just start talking to people? And I'm like, well, David told, warned you guys that that's me, you know, but. We just started a conversation, you know, I started a conversation with her and then she just came back and she says, gonna ask you a question. And then she asked me a question and, and we just, you know, just started talking to her. Um, but she just had such an amazing, sweet soul about her, huh? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, that just brought on the conversation and she just wanted to stay at our table and just yeah. talking to us, you know, and, and I just loved her heart. She had such a beautiful heart. It really makes me want to go back and, and converse with her more and go see her um, more. But you can tell that she is a, a pillar of that of that city of, of you know, of Patterson and that she's been there for quite some time. And um, I would definitely love to go back and visit her um, because uh, she she's just an amazing person. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, that was that was our day to day. And we came home. Um, and uh and we've just we've just been home just catching up on yeah. on a little bit of rest today. well we were gonna finally meet our new nephew from my brother angel and diana and they had just fallen asleep yeah so they called us and, then, and said yeah. another day well no after we got home he goes oh they're awake now i was like dude i'm home already <laughs> yeah so um you know i was thinking about today's subject you know, the other day we talked about um, communion. Remember, and about how communion use communion to break um, contracts because the enemy they believe in they they're legalists basically. Yeah. And it made me think of so many things that Jesus said in the Bible that he. Okay, let me back up. We both agree that everything Jesus said, he said it for a reason. Of course. But somehow we, not me like you you and I, but just we as, as far as our generation or, or this last few hundred years, we've turned a lot of things that Jesus said into symbols and symbolism. symbolic, yeah. And nothing more. You know, like... And it's weird because we don't take it at face value. yeah, it happened before we were born. It happened before probably even our own parents were born. You know that that communion turned into a symbolism, water baptism turned into a symbolism. I mean everything, and and, and it becomes religion, and it becomes, it becomes just, a religious practice. Yeah, and there's no power in it. You know, yeah. like because I started thinking. Uh, I was thinking this earlier. I didn't think of this to talk about this video until we actually started doing it. But on the, on the drive home from the funeral, I was just kind of thinking. Um, and and it's crazy how how did that happen? How 
How is it that Jesus would say things and we can all agree that nothing Jesus says is just for nothing? He says it because there's a reason to say there's it. There's meaning to it. And we have flipped everything around and took in all the power out of the things he said. Yeah. You know, like he literally said, do this in remembrance of me, but yet we'll celebrate Easter and Christmas like a big deal. But yet the one thing he said, do in remembrance of me, we play it down and it's just a symbol. It's just, oh, it's just, uh, you know, something to do or whatever. And same thing with baptism. Yeah. You know, you, you go through to a lot of places. And what, is, what does baptism mean? Water baptism. Most people say something to the effect of, well, it means, you know, that it's a symbol that you are dying to Christ. And it's a symbol to show the church that you are now a, a, a congregant. It'll, the little things like that, you know? Oh, there's and there's so much more to it. Yeah, you know, and here's what's wrong with that, right? Is that by making it a symbol, which I believe the enemy has done this and infiltrated the church, now it has, has taken the, the weapons out of our arsenal. Yeah. And it's like shooting a... It's like it's like shooting a blank, pretty yeah. much. It's like you know when yeah. you know when you're you're shooting a movie and uh, you're shooting blanks, you know, and it's 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 a pretend. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a all it is is just a movie set, and you're shooting blanks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I wonder how much more of scripture we've we've turned that into. Yeah. How many more things? Because obviously. Um, most of Christianity apparently has turned a lot of things into symbolism, yeah. you know? And, and it's just the thought, like, I mean, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, the other day I basically said that, for instance, communion is a contract, and demons think in contracts. So by having communion in the right way, with the right understanding, Jesus says, this is a new covenant, Mm -hmm. So, for instance, that is that breaks any contract that the enemy thinks you have. So, people can literally be delivered from demons with communion if you do it. Well, no, if you know the understanding mm -hmm. of it. I don't want to say if you do it right because that turns back into exactly. symbolism. Exactly. Or it turns back into a you, formula. You got to know what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's about that power behind it, you know, and. Um, you know, water baptism, same thing, you know. And I think this is important that we're talking about this now because we're getting we're getting kind of close to getting ready to do some some yeah. baptisms. Yeah. You know, I know that um you know, we have um you know, brother Joe's getting ready to get a team together so that we can do baptisms and we're going to be announcing that not to, you know, not too far from now. So as we're getting ready to do this, I think these are good conversations that we have right now. Yeah. 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 You know, same thing with water baptism, guys. It literally means when you when you when you are pushed back into the water, full, you know, first of all, baptism is a Greek word yeah. for full immersion. Full immersion. Why why is that so key? Why is that so important, right? Because scripture says that once you have died, sin has no hold of you. You know, so if you are going back in a sense of killing off your old self, drowning your old self, allowing your old self to go down to symbolize the way Jesus went into the in, in, into the tomb, then that means you come up a new person. The stuff that had hold of you should no longer have a hold of you. Yeah. The chains that held you down should be broken. You know, so the whole reason is that you go back to the death of your old self and you rise to the new life in Christ. You know, so a lot of times if we tell you, you know, well, hey guys, this is a symbol that you are now a member of this church. Like, where does it say that in scripture? It doesn't. Yeah. You know, we make it into a initiation. Like, like you like, like a gang initiation. Yeah, where they jump you. Yeah. Like, hey man, if you get baptized, you are now a part of us. No. It doesn't say that. Yeah. It says to to symbolize your death because sin has no hold once you die. Yeah. So that way you can rise to live a holy life. Yeah. You know, so 
I was just thinking that. I, I realize now why I thought of that on the way home because you were talking to Joe about it. Because because oh. I was I was driving down thirty three. Um, I started thinking about, I didn't think about this like I was going to talk about it today. I, I was just thinking about it, but I realized. When we were talking about the. About uh, baptism. It made yeah. me, it made me think of, yeah. just kind of my mind ran with it, you know. And, and then I started thinking about how the church has been infiltrated and, and power has been taken out of so many things, guys. Yeah. You know, I remember a day, here's another one. That I don't see often anymore. I mean, I'm not saying it don't happen. I just don't see it often. Is a boom transformation when somebody surrenders to the Lord. Yeah. When I grew up going to little like your dad. Christian churches, I had uncles that were drunks, aunts that were drunks, uh, gang member families, uh, drug addict families, and they when they break and surrender their life to the Lord, it was like boom! Like there was no counseling, no twelve step, no going to a program for twelve months, nothing. God just boom zapped them, yeah. and they were changed. Yeah, I've I've heard of that too. Like people who were just smokers, and from one day to another. You yeah. know, cold turkey, that was it. Like, you know, the Lord just... And, yeah, yeah and, and now... Trans transformation. And, and here's the thing. Most people that are giving their life now, they didn't grow up in Christian family, so they think this is normal. They think, well, it's a process. God is working on me. Mm -hmm. um, when it's God timing... I'm he, a work in process. Yeah, yeah. When, when it's God's time, he'll take this vice from me. Um I mean, it's 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 really weird, guys. Because if you ask some of the old school people that have been serving God for a long time, they don't understand that. Like, they can't comprehend the fact that why is it taking? Why is this person dabbling back and forth? Why is this person still holding on to vices? Well, there's a why word for person? that. It's called justification. Yeah. Sorry, did I yeah. say that out loud? Well, it's true because there was something. We have complicated Christianity so much that back in the day, I think, because I was a kid, they understood that to surrender your life to Christ meant to surrender your life to Christ. Yeah. Not, not part of you. Not some of you. It's almost like inviting Jesus into your house, but saying, you can't go into my basement, though. And he's like, but that's where all the wicked stuff is. No, Jesus, it looks ugly. But really, you, don't, you want that basement there. You want him to come into the living room and enjoy the living room and maybe the dining room, but God forbid he goes into the closet. God forbid he goes under the bed. God forbid he goes into the basement, you know, or the attic. Yeah. You know, and... Or into those areas where you know that you have things put away very nice and, you know... Hidden. Yeah, you know, and it's like, guys, there's... And, it, and another thing, too, is that when you surrender your life to the Lord, there's things of you that maybe aren't so outwardly that are inwardly, and that's how you know that God changed you. You know, so my thing is, if he did it for me, and he did it for my dad, and he did it for this person, did it for that person, Makes well, you think he can't do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and could it be, could it be that you still have that vice, you still have that habit because, maybe I'm wrong, but the Bible says, the voice you listen to, you become a slave to it. Because so, you want it there. So are you telling yourself that God can change everyone else but you? And all of a sudden you become a slave to it. Now you're enslaved. That's your choice. So once again, we've turned baptism into symbolism, communion into symbolism, and salvation into symbolism man that sounds like a like a three-way win for the devil yeah slowly picking away slowly picking away until christianity is like a cracker that just crumbles yeah. not even a cracker what's that cake that crumbles oh crumble cake it's a crumble cake babe. yeah <laughs> it just crumbles Coffee cake. Coffee yeah cake you crumbles. take a bite and the whole thing like you can't mm -hmm. eat one in the car while you're driving because it's all gonna end up on your shirt yeah and that's what our Christianity has become. And I think that's why a lot of Christians, guys, 
That's why we get so worked up about the laws of the United States and this in the United States and that belief in the United States because, because we feel so crumbled on the inside that we think by, by laws being changed, like it's, you really believe that it's going to crumble you because you know what? You feel crumbled. But here's the thing that you, you are not going to make a big difference in all of this world. But the thing is, is that you can make a difference in your world, in your life. Yeah. And that's where you got to start is to make a difference in your life. If you make a difference in your life, then then that's where it all begins. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it, it the, the world is a big, big world. But if it has to start with you in order to make any change. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you know, another thing, too, is like there's people that will say, man, it's, t it's too hard to commit to the Lord. And, and it's really funny when it's somebody that says it to you, like, that has had the same job for 20 years. So, you have a commitment, you go to work, and you have this job for 20 years. So that means you wake up when you're supposed to, and you work when you're supposed to, you get off when you're supposed to, and you, you, you figure out your vacations, you figure out your days off, you figure out your errands, because you gotta get to work. You have commitment for that for 20 years, but you can't commit to the Lord? Well, I think that that's at every, every realm in, in the kingdom, though. I mean, it's the same thing for tithes. It's the same thing for everything. I remember that, that we, we would, people would always have the, the, a problem even committing to, to tithing and to, you know, into committing to ministry and to committing to just anything because, um, it was always one thing or another, you know, and, and I always wondered, like, but I guess from the inside looking out, I would think like, well, why is it that people don't have a hard time committing to, you know, taking your kids to football or taking this or going here or going there? And, and I guess, you know, I guess I always wondered, like, why is it not so hard to not to commit to, you uh -huh. know, it, it, it's just. But, but it's like you said, you know, I mean, if everybody can commit to a lot of other, other things, you know, I just, I don't know. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, that's just, that's the way it is, you know, just like anything, you know, today, you know, um, you know, being at the funeral and they have a thing called the pallbearer and the pallbearers are the men that go around and they help carry the casket because one person can't carry that casket. It's yeah. too heavy, guys. Yeah, it's too heavy. Uh, maybe two people, but a struggle. How about four people? How about six people? When everybody carries a portion of it, it becomes light and becomes easy. Yeah. And that's the, the same thing. Yeah. Lighter. So it's the same thing with ministry. It's yeah. the same thing with anything, you know? And unfortunately, what happens is. And, and I'm not talking about tithing. I'm talking about everything, just, just helping, whether it's children, whether it's young adults, whether it's worship, whether it's media, whether it's uh, ushering or greeters or, you know, uh, Bible study at your house or things like that. Unfortunately, a lot of times it'll be out of a congregation of 100, it's really 10 carrying all 90. Yeah. It's you know? beautiful when you, when you see yeah. that, you know, it is really, really beautiful when you see you know, so many coming together to, you see so many parts of the body come together and you see the fruition of, of, of ministry. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you just see it blossom and you see so much coming together to do God's work together. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen it, you know, when, whenever we've had events lately, whenever we've had things going on and you see so many hands at work, man, yeah. it's such a beautiful thing when you see things just take place and you see the the things just happening the way they should man it's it's just so awesome yeah you know it's it's a beautiful thing because you know the load is just not on one person or two people it's it's everybody putting their hands in and i see it not just in our ministry but in many ministries when mm. you see so many hands coming together to do it man it's just beautiful when you see yeah. that work which is why we gave those recognition certificates the other week. Yeah. And uh, guys, this, I know many of you were like, man, how many are they going to give? But you got to realize that even before Sharon was around, I did it by myself. 
And then when Sharon came, it was me and Sharon and, and a handful of other people. And and even then, it was very, it was very spotty. You know what I mean? And it's come a long way, and I'm so glad, you know? But it's like, man, we, we carry this thing together, you know? We do this together because it should never rely, be on the backs of a few. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And yeah, so, we're so really, really blessed. We're so, so yeah. blessed with... Um, the people that have really stepped up, you know, to to be with us and to really, really, because it it we didn't it wasn't like that before. Yeah, we have such amazing, amazing leaders. We have such amazing people um, within the ministry that have just come alongside us in unity and mm -hmm. and just man locked arms with us, and we're so grateful. And not just within the church, guys. But we're talking about a lot of you guys online too. Yeah. There's many of you online that have um, come, you know, here with us and locked arms, and we're so grateful for you guys, you know. And if you haven't received your certificate, it's because um, I haven't gotten the address from. David no, I got here. them all. Oh, see, he has them all. That that same night you asked me, I got them all. It doesn't help me that you got them yeah, all. Yeah, I know. See, he knows. But he hasn't given them to me, you guys. I have your certificates, by the way, guys. Okay? So, like, another <laughs> good example, too, is like like uh, Brother Anthony. He has gotten a lot of fellowship going with many of you in a way that many times I wouldn't have been able to that often. Yeah. You know? So he took it upon himself. But he, he's like, man, I'm an extension of you guys. Yeah. Like, we're in this together, you know? And so many of you, like, I, I could never find a way or, or, like, how do I connect with Adam and, and Sheila and, you know, Felix and, and all this. And, and he has figured out a way to do it. Yeah, and you guys are doing it amongst each other. And, yeah. and I think that's beautiful and it's so awesome. So we're so, so grateful um, for the family that we have. And we're really, really looking forward to um, getting together with a lot of the leadership and a lot of you guys that are looking forward to being leaders at the leadership conference right yeah. now in October um, that we're going to be having at the Grace International in Oceanside. You know, I think that in itself is a step of faith mm -hmm. by going to this leadership conference because that's what it is, guys. It's a leadership conference and that's, that's a big deal when you step out in faith and say, you know what, I'm gonna go to this conference you know, it is a free conference, but it's a leadership conference. And when somebody feels that, um, I think it's it's a big deal. It really, really is a big deal. And we're so, so grateful that you guys are stepping out in faith and coming and say, you know what, we want to come alongside you and uh, we're going to go to this. Yeah. So, man, we're really, really looking forward to it. And if you are still interested in going, there's still time. There's still time for you to, you know, to message us and say, hey, we want to go to the leadership conference with you guys. By all means, message us. That's House in, of Rest Church at gmail.com. In case you're wondering where and when, it's Oceanside, California, October 4th and 5th. It's a Monday and a Tuesday, all day long. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll even... If you email us, I, I'll tell you what hotel we're going to be at. Um, and, or you can get any other surrounding hotel, but I'll mm -hmm. tell you where we're going to be at. You know, um, And then maybe you can join us if that's what you want to do. We're mm -hmm. heading out, out on the... Uh, on, that Sunday, we're leaving on the 3rd, and we're mm -hmm. heading straight down there. Yeah, there's going to be a few of us that are going to caravan yeah. that and way. And we're checking in Sunday night. That way we could be there all Monday, all Tuesday, and checking out Wednesday. That's a lot of time to fellowship if you want to be around. I mean... Guys, if you are an avid watcher of this, you know, I mean, if you work those days, maybe you have vacation days, I, I don't know, you know, but uh, another example of some people that take it upon themselves is Brother Alex Alves. You know, this young man that came uh, on Sunday, you know, he basically told me this. He goes, you know, he goes, I was working with Alex and, um, and he started talking to me about Jesus, you know, and he led me to the Lord. You know, and I love to hear that. That's beautiful. Do I mind if somebody says, hey, pastor, here's this person I've been talking to. Can you lead them to the Lord? Sure. But you know what's better? If you lead them to the Lord. That's right. You know, and I love that. You know the, what? We're the church. 
I love the fact yes. that he took it upon himself as a son, as a son of the Lord, as a, as a believer, as, as a, uh, a new creation in Christ, Alex, to lead. the heck? Oh, my God. You that scared creepy. me. You scared me. Why? Why did you look like that? Look at him. He's just smiling. That was weird. <laughs> Sorry, that's Abraham, guys. Being all creepy over there. <laughs> He's just smiling. I know. So, I know. And you know what was weird? Is he didn't bring me a loca mocha. He looked at three different places for you. Oh, keep, keep going. A, okay. a son of God. Yeah. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's just a trip how... <laughs> I mean, it's not a trip. It's, it's a good thing the way he just did it. And then when I did that video about communion, boom, he, he messaged. He goes... He goes, can anybody do communion or does it have mm -hmm. to be somebody with credentials? That. I was like, no, man, if you're a believer, you can do it. Amen. So he's already taking it upon himself, you know, because. I love it. I love um, it. Yeah, I like that, Alex. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And, and that's beautiful because you know what? That's the thing is that, guys, the four walls is, is just not the church. Yes, it's, it's, you know, it's a church, but you are the church. Yeah. You are the church. So guess what? You go out there and be the church. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Hokey pokey. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Guys, I did a great um, video with on LA Times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did a great video. So check out LA Times with, with uh, not LA Times, the newspaper, uh, Brother Paul. Yeah, in regards to... Uh, I, uh, Book authoring and movie movie, movie making movie and, and making, so, so it was Alfonso from uh, God's Fingerprint, myself and and Paul from LA mm -hmm. Times, the the director of Kilroy. Yes. So go to his channel, check out that video, you know, and write a comment. Let him know that I sent you. Um, but yeah, man, um, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's a it's a enough to to get your mind going and thinking like, man, am I li living a symbolic life only or am I, do I want to live a life of power? Yep. You know, so uh, we want you to have a full arsenal of the weapons you have to fight against yep. the enemy because we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities in high places. That's right. And we're called to tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Don't be shooting no blanks. So. <laughs> yes. So, all right, guys. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Bye.